So I received this parcel um, a little while ago from eBay. I've been really busy, so I haven't had time to open it yet. Um, so what it is, is it's a, whoop, <laughs> that was clever. It's gonna make a bit of a mess, isn't it? So let's try opening it up in a cleaner way. I used one of these big mail bags that seems to have a lot of filling in. So this is a radio cassette and imagine it dates back from around the 1980s. I'll have to look into the specs for sure to, uh, to check. Seems to be um, seems to be wrapped quite well. As you can see. Wow, it's a little bit bigger than I thought it might be. So we're gonna have a bit of a mess to clean up. So as you can see, this is quite big. It's a chunky one. It's a sharp and it's a radio cassette player. It's a FM, FM stereo, short wave, medium wave, long wave radio cassette player. A Sharp GF 6060, so 6060. It's quite a nice looking retro machine, this one. I believe the radio works on it, as far as I've been told, um, but probably not much else. So when I say not much else, probably not the uh, cassette deck. So there's a Mallorca 99. Oh wow. Was someone recording tapes back in 1999? Possibly. So that'd be interesting to play to see uh, what's on that tape, if anything. But uh, first looks, it's a little bit dirty, but it looks, looks in reasonable condition. It's a few little scuffs, I think, but, um, oh, something loose inside. That could be a plastic tag or something that's broken off. Or well, it could be worse. It could be something on the um, PCB boards. So, uh, yeah, so it's 22 watts total um consumption so i'd have to take the um the back off to see what the speakers say they're going to certainly say a lot less than that but i would imagine it's um maybe six watts or eight watts total um yeah looking at the size of those speakers maybe we're looking at two watt a speaker maybe three watt a speaker so um i have to have a look and, and find out so it's got all the controls Volume, balance, tone, uh, tape selector, chrome, normal. Let's read in this off. So uh, function, radio tape. So, so this is a, um, a very common feature to have the radio selected here or not. So yeah, so when the tape's selected, it's obviously off for the radio as well. And only when you press a button, the actual tape uh, plays. So we've got FM mode, stereo, mono. So if you're in a weak area, weak signal, just flip that to mono. And hopefully you can still listen in. And um, the band selector there. So the aerial looks intact. The oh, handle looks intact. It's actually made in Malaysia. So it's, yeah, it's probably a few years, a few years later then than what 
maybe I'm thinking. But anyway, um, it'd be interesting to uh, to see. Maybe this is the European model, so there's an E here after the um, yeah after the model number. Space for your batteries there. You're going to need a few batteries to run that, I would imagine. Um, I mean, it's heavy now, so <laughs> it's not particularly portable. Not like uh, these uh, fancy Bluetooth um, speakers and such like. So yeah, I shall get that powered on and see what works. So with the power plugged in, nice long lead actually, so don't have to uh, get the extension lead out for this. I'm going to find the volume, which I think is on the... Oh no, so we've got the tuning on the side. That's right, the volume on the top here. So let's turn the volume down a bit and let's try the radio. Do we get any? That's on medium wave. And remember, you need your second dose after... Go to nhs.uk slash COVID vaccination to book or visit your local walk-in centre. The sooner, the safer. Okay, so we've got the signal for the... Every vaccination gives radio us there. Hope. I'm going to turn that down. I think it's going to go quite loud because it literally is, is on very low. Let's turn it up a bit. Wow, that's quite hefty. So I think the wattage is um, is going to be pretty good on this. And the tone, that was tone was turned right up there. So let's... Um, Move off there, turn the volume back. Oh, that is bad choice, but I'm going to get the vote. What? Just, I'll just say I've got a bit of a partial. Okay. There you go. Um, Let's go for some. Good song, I think it's song. Josh is a bit iffy about this. What do you think? Hey, has he made the right choice? So it's quite loud for something of, um, of this size, actually. Yeah, I'm quite impressed by that. So let's um, put it onto tape. I won't try the other um, bands yet, as long as FM's working. Um, that's uh, that's a really good sign. So let's uh, let's go and play. <laughs> I see something, but it doesn't look good, does it? Okay, so we've got rewind working. Oh, we've got fast forward going as well. When I press play, I don't know if you observed, the take up is not working. So that's. Probably a rubber band, but the good thing is it does at least seem to be operational as far as that goes. Oh, we've got that right on the uh, edge there. Let's just so I'm just seeing if there's any movement at all and play so there isn't so if I uh, stop this let's go forward okay so it's going now it's going now the play the capstan's driving but the actual yeah maybe it's about the play isn't taken up. So we're not going to get a tape to play on this at the moment without me taking it apart, which is good. Um, this one actually, this, this particular um, radio cassette has um, auto program search system. So hopefully this searches for uh, blank parts of the recording and um, when you when you are playing it, I guess you can go forward or reverse and it will listen to the gaps and then stop. That's what I thought it should do. Um, let me um, let me try something else out. So if I go play and then forward. Ah, do you see that? You can see that's flashing there, which means it's actually picking up a recording on the tape and finding the quiet part and then it stops there. Quickly stop it. <laughs> okay, so 
that's good. So the head is probably working fine in that it's detecting what's on the tape. Um, don't obviously know about the record head at the moment. Oh, let's have a look at this indicator here. So if I go play, is that moving? It's not, is it? Okay, so that's a sign as well that we're a, a band out, I would say. Okay, let's get the back of this off then and uh, see where we are. Okay, so on the back, always remove the mains plug. Do not, um, do not service this, <laughs> probably what it says. So um, just had a quick look and uh, it's got Phillips screws. I'm hoping that my screwdrivers will be able to reach the more. So I'm just gonna start taking these out. You probably won't wanna see me taking them all out. So just taking the screws all out now, quite long screws, so I think it looks like the front's going to come off this one um, rather than come straight from the back and I don't think there were screws in here, although they may be screws, smaller screws are holding something to this case. Um, so there's a DIN um, sort of socket here, so this has got amp on it, so this would have allowed the um, sound from here to go to a separate amp. It's also got a microphone with a remote option. Stereo, by the looks of it, left and right. So that's quite interesting. And there's a beat control um, selector there, A, B and C. Who knows what that is. Um, also takes eight batteries. So um, eight times one and a half volts. Brings us up to 12 volts. So yeah, it was a little bit of a uh, thirsty machine, this one. Okay, have I got all of them? Almost. Okay, so that's those screws there, handle there. Let's uh, pop this down. Oh, okay. Wow. How cool is that? Normally, you find you've got to go in from the back, and when you go in via the back, it's a nightmare, isn't it? To get to these bouts um, can be problematic. Well, this is really showing its age. Look at this board. Could this be a late 1970s machine? Well, it's got its. Uh, separate power supply over here. Um, it's protected by a fuse as well. It's really old style capacitors in here and some more modern ones. They look in good condition though. This was when uh, quality parts used to be used. And I guess the solder on these boards are probably lead solder as well. Um, Okay, so I'm going to need to get the power to this and um, check to see what happens when I press play on this deck. Yeah. Well, hopefully I can already see the counter one here. Um, so is that not driving? Is that not... No, that's a little bit, bit slack. Um, that's okay, is that okay? I have to be a bit careful when I put this back in. Okay, so um, that's what it looks like inside. I'm going to get the power to this now. I'll turn it round. I'll get the power to it. And um, I'll look at the state of the bout or bouts. There might be some underneath. I guess there probably are. So, yeah. So the speakers, I was right with my guess. They were, well, one of my guesses. They're two watts, so that's four watts total. So, um, quite punchy though. And they've even got little tweeters as well. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's turn this round. Okay, so I've just turned this round and um, 
I could spot straight away the drive mechanism for this. So basically the counter wasn't turning because obviously the play wasn't turning and um, it looks like when play is engaged there's a separate part here. Um, it's, a, it's a wheel with a rubber part to it um, which then locks into place into here and should put the drive into this forward motion but the problem is I've, I've just put my finger on it and look it's that horrible tar that you get when uh, everything breaks down in rubber so uh, this looks like something interesting to fix here I might be able to source a rubber washer or something to go around there but I'm going to put the power to it anyway and just sort of see um, see if anything happens so the rubber bands here seem to have lasted longer than the uh, part round here which is interesting so um, if I go obviously forward actually this is working fine and play is not engaging so you can see the drive so there's a band under here as well but the drive is reaching the capstan and that feels okay so that doesn't seem to have deteriorated but this is very sticky and if it's not as wide as it was then it's not going to engage the play here so what I need to do is source something to go in its place and it looks like I can pop off a retainer here lift this bit out and then see if I've got anything remotely that I can put around there or do I need to go online to research but um, yeah hopefully not too bad to fix now you may have noticed before me actually that this uh, spring here there's a there's a metal uh, spring that applies pressure to here this was loose and it wasn't um, it wasn't held in place properly so the only way I, at the moment I've secured it is by putting this um, uh, ear prod stick inside here which then allows it to uh, apply some pressure and it seems to be in, it needs to be in this position when if you attempt to stop the deck so it's running now if I go and stop it actually does stop so I was having trouble stopping it before but I think um, apart from this um, here like working this out um, yeah this definitely needs to come out and also I found a piece of plastic from somewhere um, it looks like it might be circular on that side so I'm not sure if it's from in here let's hope it's not um, and it's maybe from over here or this side so um, I guess I won't know until I get a bit further with fixing this so I managed to get the wheel off and um, basically what I shall do now because it's very very messy is I'll just I should just clean that up for now and um, look to see if I've got a washer or something I can Pat around there. But that's going to be my first um, first point of call, obviously to clean this up. So I've just used some alcohol. It was this um, isopropanol, 90%, 91% blend, to uh, clean off this part of the little wheel. So um, it, it's not leaving any residue on me now so that's quite good I might try to put this back in uh, once I've cleaned in here so let's clean inside of here I've just put one in now if this is rubber inside of here maybe this is the nature of the issue and this could be could be more serious 
but I'm hoping it's just a metal shaft in here and it's just contaminated with the with the ring the rubber ring okay maybe it's starting to get a bit cleaner so this is really sealed in here I can show you I can twist it around and you can see the amount of muck coming off so yeah that's just a metal metal shaft like this <laughs> all the way down so that's probably why we won't have any um, grip there so it's going to take quite a bit of work so you never know with that size wheel there may be enough left on it to drive this but I probably do need to um, at least visit a hardware store uh, to get a replacement that won't begin perishing again. So I also had to clean here as well the contact point between this wheel here. So um, this was black, so now it's um, you can actually see it, it's white again. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this part one of the video and I will source a larger band um, like a washer to go around this one because at the moment it's still not enough to um, let's play it so it's still not enough to make the contact in here which then will drive this so this is still the issue um, but it's yeah it's going to be uh, it's going to be good once I can fix that so uh, thank you for watching and look out for part two when I hopefully have this working. Thank you very much, bye for now.